Hey everybody, it's Laura from Train to Respond. So recently I did a video, you've called 911, now what? And did you some steps of what you can do to help prepare for the first responders coming. But who are the first responders that coming? It kind of varies from state to state. It can vary from town to town, county to county. Um, but there are some basic guidelines that we can talk about. And it's important for you to know what is your EMS system comprised of? Who are the people that are coming to help you? So law enforcement, we call them LEOs, law enforcement officers. Their level of certification as to what they can do for a, an emergency, for a medical or traumatic, it depends on where they are located. So I've seen it all the way where they're just you know, CPR and AED all the way up to Michigan. They're paramedics, which is kind of cool, I think. So it depends on their state. Most of them can administer Narcan. So when they get there and there's a drug overdose, they're gonna go ahead and administer Narcan intranasally. And some are advanced, like I said, just dependent on the state. And they also give oxygen. So it just depends on your law enforcement, where you are located as to what their training is. Then you have EMRs, and these are emergency medical responders. These are folks who can do basic stuff and keep the patient going until the EMTs and paramedics get there. They have the basic assessment, basic airway management, lifting and moving, basic first aid, and they have about 50 to 60 hours of education and training. Then we have EMT B, basic, EMT I, intermediate, and then paramedic and advanced. These can be fire, law enforcement, or private based, and also hospital based as well. Just depends on your, your, your state. We're hospital based for paramedics in Jersey. So EMTBs, they do basic life, skill, life, life support, CPR, airways, oxygen, assessment, bandaging, splinting, extrication, bleed control. They can also administer some medications depending on your state. In New Jersey, they have about 268 hours of education that includes not only you know, classroom, but some clinical as well and some hands-on. And again, uh, hours vary state to state. Then you have the EMT intermediate. New Jersey used to have this, but they don't have it anymore as far as I know. And the EMT it, advanced, or intermediate, they do all the BLS skills there. They do some advanced skills, so they can get on scene and start an IV and give uh, certain medications according to that. Maybe some superglottic airways as well to do the airway. And again, it varies from state to state. I know some states do have some intermediates. So I think there's a real good place for them because if you're far out in the boondocks and no help's coming to you for a while, having that EMTI there can help you do a little more advanced stuff. And then you have the paramedic or advanced uh, EMT. And we do advanced skills and capability. I was a paramedic for 32 years. I was also an EMT and a first responder, so I kind of came up the, the whole ladder there. We carry a variety of medications. We can do 12 lead EKGs, which by putting that on, we can determine if you're having a heart attack or not. We do rapid sequence intubation, which is putting paralytics in, uh, so paralyzing uh, and sedating so that we can get an intubation in, which is putting a breathing tube down into your uh, trachea. We do trachs as well. If we can't get an airway, we can cut into a surgical trach. Uh, intraosseous, where we can drill into the bone if we can't get an IV and do medications that way. Uh, chest needle decompression as well if you have a, a pneumothorax. So these are just some of the skills that paramedics and advanced do. And again, it's going to vary state to state, county to county as to what your paramedics and advance can do for that. They have, uh, in Jersey, it's, it's two years, and I believe they come out with an associate's degree. Most are 1,200 to 18 hours, and that's classroom, clinical, and field training where you're out on the ambulance working it. So it's important to know who are your first responders coming and what is the makeup of your system where you live. Also, I like to include in first responders, I include the 911 dispatchers. Believe it or not, for many years, they're not considered first responders. To me, they were always my first responder because they are my lifeline. They are your lifeline when you call 911. And we're gonna do some more on 911, but again, 911 dispatchers tops in that, and I consider them first responders. So know your system and have a great day.